Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. It's no secret that gear is an integral part of all forms of PvP, and especially Arena, having to have the correct stats, correct corruption, and highest item level can make the gearing process seem like a nightmare. And how do you even know what gear is your best in slot? Well, don't worry. Today, we here at Skillcap are going to be breaking this down into three easy steps that you can use to get geared and quickly jump into Arena. Step one is going to be all about preparation, boosting your item level and getting all of the required tools in order to farm your BIS gear. Then in step two, we'll be showing you how to quickly and efficiently identify and target farm your best in slot items. Last up, step three is going to be the icing on the cake, where we push that gear set even further to the top to give you the best possible gear and gain a competitive edge in PvP. VP. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to show your support. Currently, 82% of you are not subscribed, which means that most of you are missing out on the awesome rank 1 fueled info that we drop regularly that will be sure to boost your rating in no time. So be sure to show some love and hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in more content like this, along with gaining early access to all of our YouTube videos, exclusive matchup guides, access to our forums, and the opportunity to get your gameplay reviewed, be sure to head on over to skillcap.com wow and sign up today. So if you're starting a new character or a fresh alt, then you're first going to have to complete a few steps in order to begin farming your BIS gear. If you've already got a decent enough item level to begin farming plus 14 or plus 15 dungeons, then feel free to skip forward to step 2 to find out how to begin farming your BIS items. To start off, you're going to have to upgrade your Heart of Azeroth neck and unlock essence slots. This can be done by following Magni's questline taking you into Neltharian's lair, bumping up your neck level to 50 and giving you your first essence. After this, you should unlock world quests. This can quickly be done by heading to your faction's dock in your main city and picking up either Uniting Zandalar for the Horde or Uniting Kul Tiras for the Alliance. After a short quest, you'll have them unlocked. Now it's going to be your goal to get a decent starting item level, which can be done in a couple of ways. New characters can purchase eye level 400 gear for cheap on the auction house, or complete Najatar and buy Benthic gear. Alts can also make use of Black Empire gear drops that they get from their mains, but any item level that you get early is going to help you reach step 2. With a decent eye level, now you can work on obtaining your legendary cloak. This can be started by the quest in Unwelcome Advisor for the Alliance or Return of the Black Prince for Horde, which you should receive automatically as soon as you meet the requirements, so check your quest log. This will then send you to meet Magni in the Chamber of Heart and do some quests in the Halls of Origination in Uldum. The scenario can be skipped if you've done this on a character before. After completing this chain, you'll get some nice 440 Corrupted Bracers and be rewarded with your Legendary Cloak, having 470 eye level, which is going to boost up your eye level by quite a bit. Alright, so now we've got a baseline and have everything we need in order to PvP unlocked. Your next step is going to be working toward your essences. Having the correct essences when it comes to Arena is just as important as gear. To find out the correct essences that you need for your class, we recommend checking out our free to view articles on the website. You'll also want to bookmark this for later as we'll be using it again to form our BIS gear list. Remember though that some of these essence grinds can take longer than others as they are time gated, so start working towards them as soon as you can. Again, if you're an alt, you're able to purchase essences that your main has unlocked from Mother in the Chamber of Heart. Furthermore, you should be aiming to complete the minor and major assaults located in both Aldum and the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. The minor assault is bi-weekly, and the major assault resets once a week. So in total, you need to complete three assaults per week. This is important because it's your best source of coalescing visions. Completing the dailies in each zone and the daily vision will also give you a large influx of this currency. Visions this early are also a very good source of gear, with rares dropping Black Empire catch-up gear and completing assaults having a chance to drop 440 gear. With these coalescing visions, it's then going to be your goal to work on your legendary cloak, improving its item level as well as corruption resistance, while simultaneously also giving you guaranteed pieces of gear from completing your horrific visions. To do this, simply purchase a horrific vessel from Rathion and pick up the quest and then enter the vision. For the first few, you'll only have to kill the final boss. As you progress further with your cloak, you're going to have to clear more side zones. You can fast track this by getting help in masked runs by friends or buying boosts if you have the goal. Now, your final goal to achieve before you can move on to step two is further pushing your item level so that you can farm mythic plus 14s and higher. 
This can be done in so many different ways depending on your circumstances. If you have friends willing to run you through dungeons or raids to quickly gear you up, that's of course going to be your best bet. If you've got gold, then buying armor stack boosts for Mythic Plus dungeons or raids can again gear you up very quickly. Otherwise, it's going to be the process of working your way up the Mythic Plus ladder, starting with standard Mythic dungeons and progressing with higher keys as you gain more and more gear while clearing Naya Lotha on normal and LFR just for the added eye level. We're really not worried about anything other than item level at this point, so if it's a higher eye level, it's going to be an upgrade. Also, be sure to keep a lookout for world quests with item level upgrades, including world bosses, weekly assaults, and war fronts. While you can get gear from doing arena and PvP, the speed at which you can cap and the quality of gear isn't as good as Mythic Dungeons, so we recommend sticking to PvE to gear up at this point. Now that you've reached an adequate item level to enter Mythic Plus 14 or higher at around 460 eye level, we can move on to step two. But first, now that we are at a point where we can start to target gear, we're going to have to first figure out what gear you want to target, which can be done by finding out your best in slot stats. This can be made easy by once again using our free to view articles over at skillcap.com. Let's take Rogue for instance. The recommended stats for Rogue according to our article are versatility, haste, mastery, then finally crit. So we're going to be wanting to focus on targeting versatility and haste pieces, primarily focusing on verse, which is a rogue's best stat. So to do this using our rogue example, we're going to be utilizing the in-game dungeon guide to find high verse haste pieces we can aim to target farm from Mythic Plus. First of all, remember you want to be doing the dungeon on a 14 or above, as this will net you 465 baseline gear. Going through each dungeon and the raid on Heroic using the journal, the highest versatility haste pieces I'm going to be wanting to aim to target are the Gloves of Corrupted Waters from Shrine of the Storms. The Belt of Gleaming Determination, Soul Render's Fangs, and the Seal of the Regal Loa all come in from Atal Dazar. Sea Dog's Cuffs from Freehold and the Thorn Woven Band from Waycrest Manor. Then I also, from looking at the article, see that the recommended trinkets to wear include a remote guidance device, which drops from Mechagon Junkyard. Now remember, you can also pick up any side grades along the way, which will help you speed up the process. So with these upgrades, our BIS gear currently looks like this. So we're still missing some slots. Obviously, you'll be filling these slots with any side grades that you get meanwhile. Every class also has access to two crafted pieces of gear. Leather gets boots and legs from leatherworking, while cloth, plate, and mail get different slots. For rogues, we're going to be wanting to obtain the of the Aurora legs and boots, having versatility and haste, these are 470 eye level and come with a socket baseline, so are the best in slot items that you can get without factoring in weekly RNG. You can also pick up a secondary profession, either engineering for the Azerite Helm or jewel crafting for the Bis Ring. As the Azerite Helm has good traits for assassination, we're going to also pick up engineering and craft the helm. Before you're able to upgrade your crafted gear to max eye level though, you're going to have to farm Shreds of Insanity, the best way of which is from Raid, which is great because we also still need some items from there. Referring back to our article, assassination rogues are users of the writhing segment of Dressagath, so we're going to be aiming to try and get that. The other items that we want from Raid are ideally the chest and shoulders from the final two bosses. These are not completely best in slot Azerite, but there is no other comparable options that you can get from a drop. So by this stage, our gear should look like this, having the trinkets we need, high eye level Azerite, and most importantly, perfect stats on each piece of gear. So we're ready to move on to step three. All right, so now that we're at the point where we have the best gear that we can possibly target and achieve, now it comes down to building onto this baseline and getting upgrades where we can, along with doing some weekly chores to help further build on this gear. First of all, every week you'll want to aim to complete a plus 15, which doesn't have to be in time, but then with the reset, you'll be able to try your luck with the slot machine known as the Weekly Cash. In this will be a 475 item from a Mythic Dungeon. If this is a good piece, then you've got a 10 eye level upgrade. Looting this box will also give you Titan Residuum, which can then be saved and gambled for 475 Azerite. Be sure to go through the vendor and identify which pieces have your best traits, which can be found on our article from your class of choice. There is one goal that we're going to first want to achieve, and that's reaching at least 1800, which is rival in any bracket of PvP, as this will reward you with a 465 item at the end of the week, while 2100 will give you 470 and 2400 475. So the higher rating that you can push, the better. But 1800 is a great goal to set, as you can get the highest eye level as right piece once you get that rating. While you're at your PvP box, it's also worth picking up the Call to Arms quests. Completing these will reward you with Quartermaster's Notes, which can then be traded in for a trophy, which can upgrade one of your best in slot pieces of gear to the highest eye level for your rating. On top of this, pushing as many bosses as you can in raid will further increase your gear. Now, not everybody will have the opportunity to kill the final bosses on Mythic and get 485 daggers. That's a given. 
but killing and finding groups for the first few bosses can be relatively simple and a great way to get some 475 upgrades, including some great trinkets for certain classes. Furthermore, now that you've got adequate gear, it's going to be time to start pushing higher in visions that we touched on in step one, and aiming to do more masks in turn, giving higher item level pieces of gear with five mask runs rewarding 470 eye level and four masks rewarding 465 and so on, which you can obtain once a week. Beyond that, while completing horrific visions, you're simultaneously working on completing your research tree, and the more masks that you do, the more mementos that you get, and it speeds up the process quite a bit. And when complete, this will also allow you to spend your corrupted mementos to further improve your best set of gear by purchasing and adding sockets. Then, for the rest of your time, you'll want to aim to farm Echoes of Nihilotha. We recently released a video on this, but to cover it again, the best way to farm Echoes is from 2v2 Arena. So you actually get to play PvP for once and gear up simultaneously. You you also gain echoes from Mythic Plus, clearing the raid, and doing emissary quests, so you should have a decent amount already. With these echoes, you'll then want to spend them on your best in slot corruption, which again can be found in our articles or our best corruption for each class guide, which I'll leave a link to in the description. This is without a doubt the hardest step in this guide. The corruption is sold by Mother and changes by weekly, so this could potentially leave you waiting up to a month for your best corruption if you're unlucky. This was very obviously not the best idea by Blizzard to put this on a rotation instead of just allowing players to purchase every corruption. Let us know what you think about this in the comments below. After you've got your corruption, you can then use these echoes to buy vessels, which then equates to more sockets. Anyway, by this point, you should have about as good of gear as you can possibly get without factoring in RNG. So all that remains is to repeat your weekly chores of capping arena, doing your visions, and weekly mythic plus to hope and pray that you get further upgrades in the future. Following these steps, you'll be able to quickly gear up and obtain the best stats possible to give you a competitive advantage when it comes to PvP and arena. Alright, we here at Skillcap put a ton of work into keeping you updated on how to play and play around every class in World of Warcraft Arena. The best way for you to show your support and love for the channel, as well as remaining up to date on any shifts in the meta as they happen, is to like, subscribe, subscribe, and share the video. Remember, the content that you find here on YouTube is just a taste of the hyper-improvement platform you'll find on our website. If you're serious about pushing arena rating and want to improve, be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.